After the war against the Sauk Nation, the hunting area, which included Lambton County, was used by the Tobacco Nation. However, by 1650, the Huron, Tobacco, and Neutral Nations were annihilated by the Haudenosaunee, or the Five Nations Iroquois. The war had been over the rich beaver hunting grounds of southern Ontario. Lambton now changed hands again, becoming beaver trapping grounds for the Seneca. For the latter half of the 17th century, the Iroquois flexed their muscles by expanding their territory and annoying their neighbors. This was especially true of the Seneca and Mohawk nations. They had moved into southern Ontario and at first used it only as beaver trapping grounds. But after a couple of decades, they began establishing several towns. The Mohawks pushed at the Chippewa territory, making many raids and waylaying tra trading excursions to Montreal and stealing their pelts. Threats were made, peace agreements were agreed to, and then broken. The Chippewas' patience was running out. They took the brunt of the Iroquois raids. The Chippewa were members of the Three Fires Confederacy, along with the Ottawa and Potawatomi, so they threatened to bring the whole weight of the Three Fires to bear. Finally, a Grand Council was called, and many of the Council members wanted a war of expulsion. There was little or no opposition. They devised a stratagem where they would leave the next spring with four divisions of warriors, traveling only at night. They would attack simultaneously on the new moon. The Eastern Division was made up of the largest of the Chippewa bands, the Mississauga. It was led by war chief Bald Eagle. They used the trade route to Montreal. Moving up the French River, across Lake Nipissing, down the Mattawa, and partway down the Ottawa River, they then turned inland to confront Iroquois towns from the east. There were two divisions that moved in unison, southward from the north shore of Georgian Bay. One division was made up of the Amaqua, or the Beaver Band of the Chippewa, led by White Cloud. They made their way to the Bruce Peninsula, landing at Cabot Head. The other division was made up of Ottawa warriors, led by their great war chief, Sagama. They arrived at the Penetanguishene Peninsula, where they lay in wait. Yungal led the Western Division of Soto Chippewa, Potawatomi, and Wyandotte warriors. They made their way south to Lake St. Clair, where they would attack from the west. The Western Division consisted of 400 war canoes, each manned by eight warriors. When all was in place and the new moon arrived, they attacked. This time the Iroquois adversaries had 50 years of trading for guns with the French, who had changed their policy when they lost to Euronia. So they were equally well armed. However, population tipped the balance of power to the Three Fires because they outnumbered the Iroquois by four to one. The Western Division moved up the Thames River, where, just west of the current city of Chatham, there was a very large Seneca town. Yungal and his warriors put it under siege. After a few days, they burned their way through the double palisade massacring everyone. From here, they moved up the St. Clair River and northward along the eastern shoreline of Lake Huron to Saugeen. 
The French called a peace conference at Montreal, which culminated in the Great Peace Treaty of 1701. The Iroquois War was over, and the five nations had been dispersed to the original homeland of upstate New York. This left southern Ontario a great vacuum. During the first decade of the 18th century, the Soto Chippewa Band from the St. Mary's River expanded to the St. Clair District, and Lambton now fell into the hands of the Chippewa. Although the French continued to call them Soto, they would take Amgenong for their band name. Amgenong was also the name of their new territory.